as we know micronutrients play a very important part of our body's uh, metabolic functions and out of many of these micronutrients zinc is of course one of the most important which we can highlight uh, in today's discussion now zinc of course in the body amounts to about one and a half to two grams in total and most of this zinc is stored or is present in the muscles and the bones and uh, it is apart from being there it also plays a vital role in the function of many of the enzymes in the body and more than 150 enzymes in the body require zinc as its metalloenzyme uh, to perform its optimum function having said that zinc also plays an important role in the production as well as function of insulin so therefore it has a, some impact on the control of uh, glucose in the body as well also it is incorporated uh, in the cell wall as well as in main macromolecules which provides the stability to these molecules by working as an on-site antioxidant so therefore it will help preventing uh, destruction of most of the cells in the body. Now, main source of zinc to a human being is through the diet. And many foods contain zinc, although uh, animal sources are the best source and out of that also, seafoods give the better yield of or bioavailability of zinc. Now, zinc is mainly absorbed in the duodenum but of course, based on the different factors present in the diet, the absorption process can get activated or hindered. Proteins, amino acids are some of the things which will improve the absorption of zinc, while calcium, iron, and especially phytate in the, uh, in the plant food uh, reduces the absorption. So the practical importance is that if somebody is on zinc supplements, concomitantly with iron and calcium, they should not be taking them together. And it's always preferred that zinc is taken as an isolated product or isolated compound rather than in combination with other especially divalent cations like calcium and uh, iron. So therefore, it is very important that we maintain a good dietary habit in order to maintain adequate zinc status in the body. Now, zinc deficiency can lead to impairment in the physical growth of individual. Now, linear growth has been clearly shown to be improved with zinc supplementation and especially uh, lean tissue deposition is uh, influenced by zinc levels in the body. So, the practicality is when we are treating undernutrition or malnourished children, it is important that we provide adequate amounts of zinc in order to maintain a proper uh, weight gain of these individuals. Apart from that, for sexual maturations, also zinc is very important and it can even lead to zinc, severe zinc deficiency, can lead to hypogonadism. Then uh, skin development as well as wound healing. Now, it has been shown that zinc deficiencies can lead to development of pneumonia and diarrhea and uh, the part it plays in reduction of the severity of a diarrheal illness as well as the duration of a diarrheal illness also the recurrence rate of diarrheal illness is quite clear with zinc supplementation so that is why today in the management of all cases of diarrhea we use zinc as a therapeutic agent so for children about six months of age the recommendation is to use 20 milligrams of uh, elemental zinc for 10 to 14 days duration. And uh, if I uh, recollect uh, the past where I said that it can interact with many other uh, divalent cations, uh, in treatment of diarrheal illness, we have to make sure that we provide this zinc in a single form, single zinc containing form without a combination of other divalent cations like iron or molybdenum like that. So then apart from that, zinc also plays an important role in night prevention of night blindness. Although we know that vitamin A 
is the main uh, component that is responsible. The conversion of retinol to retinaldehyde or the active form is done through with the help of zinc uh, uh, metal. So it is an important part in most of the functions of the body and zinc deficiency overall can lead to uh, poor growth, especially in children, directly as well as indirectly by bringing down the uh, immunity and increasing infection rates in this individual. So we have to make sure that adequate amount of zinc is incorporated into daily life and take measures to improve the bio bioavailability of zinc in the diet. Selenium is another micronutrient which has gained prominence over the last few decades. Although initially it was known as a toxic molecule, today it has been identified as an important molecule in the day-to-day -day metabolism of a human being. It gets incorporated into many enzymes as well as proteins and glutathione peroxidase is one enzyme that requires selenium for its optimum function. Apart from that, selenium is also important for the conversion of T4, tyroxine into triiodothyronine or the active form. Selenium also plays an important role in uh, reducing the toxicity of heavy metals like cadmium and mercury. Therefore, uh, selenium, as we have identified as an important molecule, however, still we have not identified selenium in isolation as an important molecule. Isolated selenium deficiency is rare. However, in the presence of vitamin E deficiency, selenium deficiencies have been clearly shown. Selenium is believed to be implicated in the improvement of cardiac function and Keshan's disease is one such thing which occurs in the deficiency of uh, selenium. Also osteoarthritis in Cushing-Beck uh, disease, then reduced uh, cancer risk is implicated as well as reduction in the LDL oxidation and increase in thrombosis. So therefore selenium is known to bear some protective function to the human body, although still it is in a research state. Again, selenium main source would be uh, uh, diet, but again the quantity or the quantum of selenium in the diet would depend on the soil selenium levels. So therefore, most of the selenium which is bioavailable are from animal source of food, especially fish and uh, dairy products, then vegetables, fruits, grains are not good sources of uh, selenium because it can vary depending on the soil levels of selenium.